Hello and welcome to A Portion Ministries. This is Renewal of the Mind, but this is Stronghold, this is Mentoring, this is the Family Prayer Call. It's all going to be joined together in this one call. Today is actually Friday, September the 7th, 2018. The time is now 5.02 a.m. A Portion Ministries is based on Proverbs 31, 15 that says she rises while is yet night. So there's things that God shows me in the midst of the night. The scripture goes on to say and prepares portions for her household and her servants. I told the Lord, I don't have any servants. He said, you don't, I do. You're my servant, but then you're my son. Oh, that's a whole nother story. Um, Serve as unto me and I will send the people. Now, as I was setting up this morning to do this recording, I heard the Lord say, you're doing it to the audience of one. So really, I'm being tested by God with can I pray for people and pour out of my vessel that is full into the empty vessels. And it's not a, de a degradation, but pour into the vessels that God sends to me, the oil of the anointing, of deliverance, of prayer of healing, of the word, okay? So, God, we thank you and praise you for this day called today, that you get the glory, the honor, and the praise out of this whole series on divine alignment and purpose. We thank you that our lives are getting an in alignment with your plan. We thank you that strongholds are being broken and that the, the wrong strongholds are being broken and we're running into your name as a stronghold, as a refuge. We're learning more and more of you. We're learning more and more of your ways that are not like ours and your thoughts that are not like ours. We're learning how to use the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal, but they're mighty through you, oh God, for the pulling down of strongholds, uh, mindsets, wrong doctrines, wrong thoughts. And so we thank you and praise you that you're bringing us into alignment so that we can walk in purpose with what you have us in the earth realm, alive in the land of the living right now. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to use the first half of this call just to share that that's been turning in my heart overnight and what God wants us to see about our mindsets and the strongholds that must be torn down and then the alignment the, the, of male and female. He created man and God is saying, I want to tear down some strongholds, some wrong thoughts about the fact that I created man, male and female in my image. And then because it was woman who transgressed the law, but man who sinned, there's been this blame game going back and forth. If she wouldn't, if he wouldn't, and I can't, stop it. Let's go back to God's original intent. Let's fix this. And so what God told me to, to start with this one thing I wrote in here a couple of days ago is that we need to understand that um, as a man, mankind, we are complete. And God completed mankind with male and female. He created man. And so we got to change our mindsets. Look, 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 I'm ahead of myself. Let me talk about these three mindsets that are in the world and make sure that we're thinking out of the right one that's going to be the godly mindset. I'm going to do it like this. There is a barbaric mindset, barbaric mindset, and then there is a Greek mindset, and then there is a, a, a Hebrew or a Hebraic so you'll hear me, um, Hebraic, I spelled it wrong. Let's just say a Hebrew or a Hebraic mindset. These are the mindsets that are in the world right now. These are the houses that are competing. So I want you to see, again, a stronghold is a house made of thoughts at a young age for future occupation of demonic forces. And so with the God, ungodly strongholds, these are the strongholds of the enemy, it has a strong foundation. It has walls, no windows, and it has a fortified. So these are the mindsets that we don't want to be operating with. As a matter of fact, I should have reversed that, put the barbaric on the bottom, because the barbaric actually drives the Greek. So, okay. And then we have the godly strongholds. It has a foundation. Jesus is the cornerstone, the blood of Jesus, the work of Christ, of Calvary. It has a, a roof, a top. We'll get more into that. But the difference is, in the godly house, as I said, this is the Hebrew way of thinking, it has doors, a door, Jesus is the door, and it has windows. Um, so you, there's access between the realms of thinking. And so I just wanted to, now let me tell you, you like, Paulette, you, you talk in Greek to us. What are you talking about? The barbaric mindset, which I said should be on the bottom, I'm just not going to rewrite it right now. 
The barbaric mindset is exactly what it sounds like. It's gross, it's over the top, it rules with fear, it rules with domination. In volume four, I talk about these mindsets that are alive that you can also learn about them in Chuck Pierce's book, uh, A Time to Advance. And he's explaining why do we need to understand the time to advance with God's timing. God's timing, because the barbaric mindset, it, um, it dominates with fear, it rules. Let me tell you what a barbaric mindset. Who would think to walk into a school and shoot up a bunch of kids? That's, they're being dominated by a barbaric mindset. And actually combined with the Greek mindset, because the Greek mindset is knowledge is power. You got to educate yourself. Although the Greek mindset is better than the, Hebra than the barbaric mindset, it's not the way God wants us to think. You, Proverbs 3, 5 tells us to trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. But Greek mindset says, I'm going to pull myself up by my, strap, my bootstraps and I'm going to be all right. This, these mindsets are not right. And truth be told, the majority of the people that I know have been raised in a Greek mindset that education is important or we weren't talked about, taught about education, but girl, you better know what you know. And, and so this Greek mindset, knowledge is power, get educated. I'm not against education, you need it, but that's not where you rely. The mindset that we want to operate out of is the Hebrew mindset or the Hebraic mindset, and that's God's ways of thinking. Um, as we saw in Isaiah 55, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways, mine are higher than yours. And so we're to, and, and, and another scripture in, I believe it's Isaiah, I don't know the verse number, but he says, come let us reason together. And so God is saying, you need to reason because your thoughts are not in alignment with my thoughts. He says, I have plans and purposes for you, plans to bring you to a good and an expected end. If you try and understand his plans, even with the Greek mindset, you will not understand. You cannot fully understand and comprehend his plans. And so we have to tear down these barbaric mindsets, these Greek mindsets, tear them down. When I say tear them down from the, look, we need to erase it from the bottom and don't leave a stitch of it alive. Tear down those Greek and those barbaric mindsets and God show me how to think like a Hebrew. One way to know how to think like a Hebrew is found in the first five books of the Bible. It's called the Pentateuch and it's uh, the, the God's original, God's dealing with mankind and it shows how he deals with his people. It gives law, but Jesus fulfills the law so don't get tripped up understanding let me put the words back. I don't want the house up there, but I want the words there. There is the barbaric mindset that's wrong. We don't want that one. And then there's the Greek mindset. So don't get tripped up with the word law from a Greek mindset. You're trying to judge me. That that's the law. Well, Jesus fulfills the law. And then God gave law to teach his people how to live, pleasing to him, to live with God's mindsets. And so that, that renewal of the mind, the Romans 12, 1, and, and the Romans 12, 2, because 1 is about the body. But the renewing of the mind found in Romans 12, verse 2, you receive Jesus to get you into the house and not know how to move around. And you got to renew your mind from a barbaric and a Greek mindset over to a Hebrew mindset, thinking like God thinks. And, and there is a, a transformation that takes place, a metamorphosis. You completely uh, demolish and tear down the old thoughts and build back up the godly ones. And you can do that through those first five books of the law. Okay. <laughs> I know I said a lot right there. God, I pray right now. I stop and I pray over that. Help us, God. Any of us that are in bondage to a barbaric mindset, a lot of people that were abused when they were young, whether it was verbal abuse or physical abuse, barbaric tactics were used against them. And so those mindsets must be torn down. Uh, Greek mindset, why are you not as good as this one? That's a Greek mindset where you would compare yourselves among yourselves instead of among Jesus and try and be the best you that he created you to be and put you in the earth realm to be. And so these are some strongholds that must be torn down in our thinking so that we can be free to enter in. We're living under, I didn't, let me put that on there. We're living under an open heaven and the portals of heaven are open for us to get in alignment with the plans and the purposes of God. Of male and female, he created man. And to tear down all of this inequality, I hear you, Lord. Um, understand this, male and female, he created man. Both male and female are called the sons of God. 
God is not, when it says creation is waiting for the sons of God to be manifested, it's not just the male, it's the male and female, it's the complete man that's created in the image of God, male and female, complete, joined together as one. So God is wanting, the, the, we're both sons of God, and then, so that means that you, you're taking the gender off of the female to be called a son, but let me take the gender off of the male, because we're all the bride of Christ. That's a female role, right? And so as we begin to understand alignment and these roles, that, that, that Jesus loved the woman as Christ loved the church. Okay? So you got a job to do. That's a big job. That's a responsibility like he gave man before he gave man woman. And then he man woman received her name after the fall. Her name was always woman. If you go through in Genesis 3, he didn't call her Eve until after the fall. After the breakdown of communication, did she get an actual name? She was male and female. He created created man she was one man he was he came Adam but she came woman I'm not even gonna go into all of that but one other thing that I was hearing as I was driving in about the the equality or the inequality that needs to be fixed is that male and female he created man we're all sons of God we're all part of the bride of Christ and what God was saying was one is weaker one is stronger but we are co-heirs where are you getting that from, Paulette? In 1 Peter chapter 3, which 1 Peter chapter 3, the first, as I said before, in, a, in about the wife, where we're the, let me write that up here for the sake of this recording. You have the man, the husband, the father. You have the woman, the wife, the mother. And so in 1 Peter chapter 3, the text is talking to husbands and wives, but it starts out talking to wives. The first five verses is all to the wife and telling her how she is to act and behave and conduct herself unto her husband as if unto the Lord. And then at verse um, 7, it talks to the men and it tells the men, you need to live with her according to knowledge which means according to science. Now let me read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, and we can see that we're whole and complete male and female, and God wants us to learn to walk in alignment and to live together. It says, in, this, in the same way you married men, should marry men. So God is getting us in alignment, uh, men, to understand that once we're married, your goal and role is to be married. So don't play wife, don't have boo things and spare ribs, but to be a married man that's learning to live with your wife, live with her considerably, with an intelligent recognition of the marriage relation. That's why God is saying, get your mind right and understand what marriage is for. It's not just we're a power couple and she's my boo and he's my boo. There, you got to get a knowledge, first of what marriage is for, to love her like Christ loved the church. So how did Christ love the church you need to be a studier of Jesus men and and know what, what you're stepping into in marriage and then, then live with her according to the relation honoring the woman honoring the woman it didn't say wife now you live with her according to knowledge but honor the woman uh, as physically the weaker but realizing that you are joint heirs of the grace of God's unmerited favor of life in order that your prayers may not be hindered and cut off otherwise you can't pray effectively and so that's something to say a lot in the book of Psalms it says say a lot pause and calmly think on that that if I don't live me the husband live with my wife according to knowledge knowing that the woman is just the weaker vessel, but we're co-heirs together. I want you to see that. God wants us in alignment and understanding what he's calling us to do. And this part must be, we must be made whole in these areas where we were off so that even the mistakes, the MSG that we made in our parenting or that was made against us in our parenting can now be redeemed under the blood of Jesus. This is how a lot of us have gotten off. Verse 8 of 1 Peter 3 says, finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind. You should be united in spirit. He's trying to get us spirit, soul, and body. We talked about that earlier uh, in the previous messages to be of one mind, the mind of God. So when we say the Hebrew mind, we can also say that this is the mind of God. We want to think with his thoughts and not these carnal thoughts, the lower nature that's talked about in Galatians chapter 5. Um, 
It says, finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind, united in the spirit, sympathizing with one another, loving each other as brethren of one household. Come on. Compassionate and courteous, tenderhearted and humble. Oh, keep reading if you want to. But I, I, for the sake of time, I need to move on because what I wanted to do. Oh, I only got five minutes. In volume three, Renewal of the Mind, I wrote this book, um, how to renewal of the mind everybody tells you that according to Romans 12 too but how so this book is 200 almost 300 pages like a notebook workbook type of showing you how to renew your mind one of the concepts that we must renew our mind to is the word repent repent doesn't just mean I'm sorry that's a Greek mindset when you repent and say I'm sorry or really I'm sorry I got caught that's, that's a Greek mindset. But to repent the way that God tells us to repent, it means to change your mind, to abhor your past sins, and to think differently. It is to, to do a 180, not a 360, because a 360 puts you right back in the mess. But a 180 frees you of the mess. And so that's what repent is. You change your thinking about the behavior, whether it was barbaric or Greek. It's barbaric to think that you can uh, have all of these different women. It, that's, I don't even want to get into that. But God is saying he wants us to renew our mind. And, and this chapter, I spent a whole chapter talking about repent. I spent a whole section looking at what it meant to repent. And then at the end of certain sections, I would insert prayers in this book. So this is a prayer call, but family teaching. So I want to just read the prayer that begins on the bottom of page 171 if you have the book. I only have four minutes. I'm going to run out of time. I'm going to finish the time with this prayer, praying that the strongholds are being broken, that we're made whole based off of 1 Peter chapter 3. That was the scripture that we were in. It was 1 Peter chapter 3. I'll paraphrase verse 1 through uh, 6, and then we read verse 7 through 8, but I tell you to go read the whole thing for yourself. So thank you for this time of preparation. You have given us the ingredients. We have prepped the food and put it all together, and you provide the fire. You are the God that answers by fire, but when your fire comes, it does not consume the sacrifice that is of you. But whatever is fleshly and worldly will be consumed, but the kingdom will remain. It will be like the burning bush on fire, but not consumed. It is consumed with fire, but is not damaged. You are doing what you need to do. Season us, salt us, turn the light on, massage us, and get the kinks out spiritually. You are showing us how to present our bodies and to renew our mind according to your word, O oh God, not according to tradition and religion. Yes, we do need some of that because you are a God of order in the earth realm, but we do not let worldly order outweigh kingdom order. Come on, God. You are calling us to see the significance of the book of Romans. As we hunger and thirst after you, you show us the nuggets you have for us here. Uh, so in the chapter, I was going through the significance of the book of Romans. This is just the closing prayer. Let's keep reading. So you got to get the book and get in it. Or if you have the book and you kind of fell off, this is a good place for you to jump back in. Continue to transform us and show us how to be here for a sin sick world. Show us how to help. As in Romans 1, the list of things that happened after the reprobate mind is the same list in Galatians 5, the works of the flesh, and 2 Timothy 3, the perilous times, as you are telling us over and over in the word of God that these things will be so and how to escape them. Come on, those mindsets, those are the wrong mindsets. You're telling us how to escape them is to renew our mind and learn how to think like you by first seeking the kingdom. Kingdom ready, Matthew 6, 33. And as you are growing in knowing who you are, in, as we are growing in knowing who we are in your kingdom, not just for us, but to benefit your kingdom. I want to be the best ambassador you have placed within me. Not better than anyone else. They're not my standard. Jesus is. So thank you for showing me more and more how to be like him. Thank you for allowing us to truly understand what it means to be trailblazers. Thank you for calling people to go down the trails that I am blazing for you, oh God. You, I am just a yielded servant and you are showing me how to wield the sword of the word of truth that chops down the obstacles in our way. Here's some obstacles, wrong thinking, strongholds. 
Thank you for showing us what it truly means to hunger and thirst after righteousness, to be a man after your own heart, male and female, you created man, that we are seeking your heart, that we are seeking the water of God. Thank you that we are recognizing and acknowledging the thirst, that we are painfully aware that there are things that we need in your word, in the constitution of our kingdom, that will refresh, support, and strengthen our souls for you, O oh God, that you desire for us to be those trees that are planted by